Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible lesson. We have like, I think, five more after this one. And then we'll be done with it. Unless I get another book. So here's what we'll be talking about today. I wrote it down for you. Okay. Jesus anointed at Bethany. The golden text tonight is Mark 14, 8. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. And the Bible scripture tonight will be Matthew 26, verses 1 through 16. Did I cover everything on this one? Yeah. So go ahead and put this down. Let's see, I got the lesson. So I'll get that all cleaned off and everything after we're done. Okay. The time, the day before the triumphal procession, Matthew recalls this event at this time because it was connected with the betrayal of Judas, Judas Iscariot, and the place where we are tonight house of Simon the leper at Bethany about two miles east of Jerusalem okay so you can like just sit back and close your eyes while I'm reading or follow along or just watch because the scripture lesson tonight is Matthew 26 verses 1 through 16 Sorry, my eyes get really, really blurry at my phone. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto, the, unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. He's told them this many times but they never really understand what he's talking about. They didn't really think, you know, he was going to be crucified and then raised from the dead. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Cappius that year, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility and kill him, always wanting to kill Jesus for no reason other than he's getting the people to listen to him and they're listening to the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, a lot less. And they want people to listen to them and them only. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. And that, of course, was Mary, one of Jesus' followers, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, who Jesus raised from the dead. They all followed Jesus. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, What purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, think of this when I'm telling you that. Picture this. Judas Iscariot is the one in charge of the money that's, you know, collected or people's gave. He's in charge of the money. So he wasn't saying this because he was worried about the poor people. He was saying it because he wanted the money. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you. But me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, 
she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. And it is, as why we're also hearing it today. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said unto them, What will ye give me, if I deliver him unto you? And they decided with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time, he, Judas Iscariot, sought opportunity to betray him. And you know he eventually did. 30 pieces of silver but you know what happened to Judas Iscariot after that he seen Jesus was you know condemned like what did they think was going to happen right after he seen that Jesus was condemned he brought back the 30 pieces of silver but they wouldn't take it because it was blood money so he just threw it at them but he had already committed his crime and he went out and hung himself Judas Iscariot did. We could get more into detail about that, but I won't because I don't want to make the video long. So we'll just continue on with this uh, reading about Jesus anointed at Bethany. In this lesson, we see how one who loved Jesus did not hesitate to give her best to Jesus. Also, we see how some, perhaps only one, who did not love Jesus, Judas, was upset because he considered it a waste for the woman to do what she did. Your friends may say that it is not necessary to do all you do for Jesus, but it is worth it just to see his smile of approval and to hear him say, she or he hath done what he or she could. Done their best. When Jesus had finished his talk with the disciples on the Mount of Olives, he once again told them that his death was near at hand. The feast of the Passover would be held in two days, two days, and then he would be crucified. While Jesus was talking to his disciples, the chief priests, scribes, and elders went to the high priest's palace to get permission to kill Jesus. They were already making their plans, but they needed a permit so they would not be hindered. They made it clear to the high priest that they would wait until after the feast because the people might cause an uproar. Many times, Jesus stopped in Bethany to visit his friends Lazarus Martha and Mary. They were all siblings there. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. He would not be with them very much longer. This time, when he and his disciples stopped in Bethany, Simon the leper had a supper for him. Simon had no doubt been healed of his leprosy, and because of this, he wanted to do something for Jesus. He was not a, a leper at this time because lepers could not be near other people. He was probably called Simon the leper to distinguish him from the other Simons. Many people from the village were there just like your friends and neighbors come to your house when you have a kitchen dinner. Martha may have been serving as she did at different times. Lazarus, who Jesus had raised from the dead was alive and well after four days of being dead. Just to get a good look at Lazarus, why some of the people might have been there, the disciples were there. Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, was surely there because she would not want to miss out on spending a few more minutes with Jesus. Everyone was probably thinking of something different. The people wanted to honor Jesus. Those who prepared the meal 
and served it had honored him in that way. Don't you have a happy feeling when the pastor, the evangelist, or the missionary comes to your house and you get to help your mother prepare food for them? The disciples were probably thinking about the things Jesus told them, and Jesus was probably thinking of how his life had been different since he had been with Jesus, Lazarus. But he was not satisfied. He wanted to make some easy money. Judas, Judas. What wouldn't he do for a few more silver coins? Mary's heart was overflowing. You see that, Cheryl? Never mind. Mary's heart was overflowing with gratitude because Jesus had brought her brother back to life. As she looked at Jesus, she wondered how she could show how much she loved him. Perhaps she left without anyone noticing that she had gone. While they were eating supper, Mary came into the room. She was carrying a box of ointment in her hand. She was very careful with this ointment because it was very expensive. She may have spent all the money she had saved up for a long time to buy it. Mary opened the box and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. She poured some on his feet. Then she got down and wiped Jesus' feet with her long hair. The whole room was filled with the odor of perfume. Mary was showing Jesus how much she loved him. Some of the people at the table said, Look at that woman. Why is she wasting all that costly perfume? Judas Iscariot and the other disciples said, Why wasn't this ointment sold and the money given to the poor? Judas was not really thinking of the poor people. He just wanted the money for himself. Jesus said, why do you trouble the woman? Let her alone. She has done a good thing for me. You will always have the poor with you, but I will not always be with you. Probably not one of the other people at the table had done anything for Jesus that night, but they were criticizing Mary. She had given the most valuable gift she owned. She had done what she could to show her love for Jesus. Mary did not think about spending the money paid for the ointment for something for herself. She could have bought a new dress or a new pair of shoes to wear to the supper. She sacrificed to give something to Jesus. We must show our love for Jesus by doing things for others. She wants our best. Suppose you had a dollar to spend. You could buy candy or ice cream for yourself. You could buy a book or a model car. Those are things you could buy for yourself. If you want to show that you love Jesus by sacrificing, you could buy something for a sick friend. You could buy something for a boy or girl who never has the opportunity to get any of the little extra things we all buy. You could give the money to the missionaries, or you may do more good by buying something for someone who does not like you so much. That would be a real sacrifice. When God tells you and me to do something, we usually wonder whether it has ever been done before. Simon gave him a supper. Martha served him at the table, so we can do the same. Mr. So-and-so gives $10 in the offering. I will give $10. Mrs. So-and-so works in the Sunday school, teaching or helping. I'll do that too. You see, we look to see if anyone else has done those things before. If they have, then we will do it. Mary never thought of that. She never asked whether there was anybody else who had poured ointment on Jesus' head. Her heart said, do it, and she did it. Amen. Amen. Sure.
Yeah. And that was the Bible lesson for tonight. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Let's see here. The next one will be about the Last Supper. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study, Bible lesson, and Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.